Hi guys, it is a chilly fall night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is now Friday night, Friday night, October 1st, 2021. Uh, we have made it three quarters of the way through 2021, heading in deep into the fall of 2021. And I have had a busy day and me and the little dog up to all sorts of planet nibbling activities today. So I am just now getting around to my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where we uh, head over to mongabay.com, checking in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls uh, at Mongabay. And before their regularly scheduled uh, <coughs> newsletter, Red is asking us to take five minutes out of our lives for a survey about how Manga Bay is doing and it's the the usual, you know, kind of what you would expect. Uh, all right, I just want to, a couple of the questions, you know, you can expound. Okay, <clears throat> can you share some examples and or explain how Manga Bay articles help you make decisions. And my uh, response to Red on that question was, other than filling me with existential dread and hopelessness and despair, Manga Bay has pretty much eliminated palm oil out of my personal supply chain, and I have not eaten one lemur since first finding you 11 years ago and then uh, twice they ask in the multiple choice if you would like to see more hopium in Manga Bay but they do not give you the choice would you like to see less hopium two times uh, you know, this list of improvements to Manga Bay, that more upbeat, positive environmental story. So at the very last, do you have any additional feedback or comments from Manga Bay? <clears throat> My response to Rhett Butler on that one was, cut the hopium crap. Cut the parroting the corporate greenwashing line when you know damn well it is crap. Less positive environmental stories when you know damn well there is no positive environmental news. Admit that a population of 8 billion people is unsustainable. Admit we are doomed. More advocacy to stop breeding. Hope that helps. Anyone who has seen my interview with Rhett Butler, uh, you know, when, when Rhett, uh, the, the proud father of a, I guess Rhett's son is about three years old now. Uh, Rhett Butler telling me he would never, never uh, tell someone not to have children. Little dog, why are you so insistent on sitting right here? How about right there? Thank you. All right, you survey out of the way. Let's check in so you know. And as they talk about in here uh, in the survey, you know, asking whether you are aware that Manga Bay has a YouTube channel, and Manga Bay does have an excellent YouTube channel. So this week, their uh, video is railway troubles talking about that uh, planet-eating railroad down there in the Amazon rainforest connecting, you know, these, these mines to a new port 
in Brazil, anybody who does not understand what the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative looks like, you might want to go over to Manga Bay's YouTube channel. I actually remember seeing this story in the mainstream media. I don't know if this is another case or Manga Bay is just getting to it. Beached whale shark in Indonesia cut up by locals to eat. And I'm assuming what they mean is the shark was still alive. The whale shark was still alive when it washed up on the beach. Locals in in Indonesia's West Java province reportedly cut up and ate a whale shark that washed up on a beach last week. Authorities have deplored the incident, noting that the species is protected under Indonesian law. Uh, so I, I don't know what the big surprise is. What do you think uh, the, these people are going to do? They don't even have to get in a boat to go harpoon the damn whale shark. It's right up there on their, into their stew pot. What, what do you think anyone's going to do with, what, 2,000 pounds of free fish washing up at your front door? You're going to cut it up and you're going to eat it. This is a real sky is blue story. All right. What is going on in Canada? Oil pipeline on native lands ramps up as Canada honors its indigenous people. Yes. Construction of the Line 3 pipeline by Canadian oil giant Enbridge is in its final stages of completion and is set to carry tar sands crude from Alberta to Wisconsin via lands that indigenous people use for hunting and harvesting. There are concerns the pipeline will continue, will contribute to further spills in the distinctive wetlands and wild rice fields of the region as the company has a long track record of hazardous liquid incidents, including the largest inland oil spill in U.S. history and failing to follow environmental laws during construction. Yes. Some indigenous rights and tribal leaders view Canada's approval and the, and the U.S. approval. Uh, I think it was finally officially approved the last leg uh, a few days ago here in the U.S. Some indigenous rights and tribal leaders view Canada's approval and the subsequent construction of Line 3 as part of the continuing legacy of colonialism, yes, and cultural erasure, which the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, which was yesterday, right under my radar, the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation seeks to address so we see how that saved the planet pretty boy, Justin Trudeau. Did Justin, did he just win another term, I think? The pretty boy is in for another term. So this is how uh, Canada is honoring its indigenous people by ramming an oil sands pipeline across their lands. Yes. Uh, anyway, again, guys, I can only uh, touch on a few of these. Okay, let's look at the six major threats to biodiversity addressed in a new study by the IUCN are Take a wild guess. The six major threats to biodiversity, which all, of course, can be summed up as one threat or eight billion threats, but since they can't just say humans are the biggest threat to biodiversity, they kind of divide humans up into agriculture, climate change, hunting and trapping is one, 
invasive species, which also, now of course the number one invasive species on planet Earth being the human, logging and pollution. Yes, there are large areas of the globe in which animals have more than a 50% chance of encountering these threats. Do you think so? I would say the vast majority of the globe uh, has about a 99% chance of encountering a human. <clears throat> Globally, agriculture. Agriculture is the greatest threat to terrestrial mammals, birds, and amphibians combined, while hunting and trapping are the most prevalent for terrestrial birds and mammals. So the greatest threat, agriculture, the most prevalent threat, hunting and trapping, but all the threats otherwise known as humans. Yes. And uh, looking like Southeast Asia and Madagascar getting the vote as the most screwed places on the planet. Okay, this is, you, you know, I, I love to see this. This is this latest explanation. So you can figure out the difference between legal timber and illegal timber. Monitoring reveals Indonesia's legal timber scheme is riddled with violations. Yes, a monitoring exercise by indigenous peoples and local communities of Indonesia's, quote, certified legal timber, timber industry has found myriad violations. Among other findings, the group reported logging companies cutting down trees outside their concessions, woodworking shops manipulating delivery records to obscure the origin of the wood, and exporters selling forged export eligibility certificates. Yes. During the monitoring, the observers face a range of challenges from difficulty accessing official records to threats from armed groups. Yeah. Uh, their work could become even more difficult under a new government regulation that appears to change independent moder monitoring of the timber industry from a mandatory exercise to an optional one. I bet there's a whole lot packed in that sentence. Uh, okay, did you realize that live hornbill trafficking is on the rise, on the rise in Southeast Asia? Yes. Between 2015 and this year, there were 99, you know, officially reported incidents of live hornbill trafficking involving 268 birds spanning 13 species. Did not realize there were 13 species of hornbill on the planet. What do you think, Sancho? Did you realize, although there won't be a long... Speaking of birds, all right. So this is one where, uh, you know, we're talking about corona panic lockdowns, this big debate, and, and, and I'm okay with this one. I'm, I'm okay with this one. When North America locked down, birds filled the gap left by humans. Of the 82 bird species considered in an analysis, the distribution of 66 species changed during corona panic shutdowns and most of them grew in abundance in and around human settlements. 
the researchers gathered more than four million records uh, blah 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 the study in science advances captured how sensitive birds are to human activities and ha and highlighted how even small adjustments meaning at taking this is getting rid of a small number of humans out of an area uh, could make areas used by humans welcoming to other species. This, this is, you know, real rocket science that when you make an area uh, for whatever reason a human exclusion zone, you get rid of the humans and wow, imagine that uh, how all of these other animals say, hey guys, there's no more humans here. We can uh, get back to business. Okay. Guys, as I say, uh, I, good Lord. Uh, here is, oh, here's another one of these sustainability certifications. You know, maybe, maybe Rhett will uh, get my survey. Anyway, moving on, build around the forest, not through it, study says of Sumatran Trucking Road. Researchers have identified several alternative routes for a planned mining road that will cut through the heart of the Harapan Forest, the largest surviving tract of lowland tropical rainforest left on the Indonesian island of Sumatra. The alternative routes would avoid thousands of acres of forest loss as they skirt the main, you know, remaining forest block while traversing lands that are already deforested. Yes, local environmental activists have identified similar alternate routes, but the fact that the company is proposing a more destructive path, you know, right through the middle of the single biggest uh, forest left on the island of Sumatra, points to a lack of will to minimize deforestation or a deliberate attempt to cut through the middle of the forest, researchers say. All right, you'll be shocked to hear the latest tiger news. As tigers dwindle, Indonesia takes aim at poaching ring. I bet this is three uh, Sumatran tigers, apparently killed by one person. Um, anyway, okay, we have a review of a new book out. Uh, this is a real catchy title, A Perfect Storm in the Amazon Wilderness. Success and Failure in the Fight to Save an Ecosystem of Critical Importance to the Planet. The book, uh, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, no doubt being a big part of this book, talking about how new transport infrastructure is opening the Amazon to global commerce. Yes. Uh, anyway, maybe I'll go to that book and we'll get a doomsday sermon out of it. All right. You will not believe this, that new permits for Brazilian beef exports to the U.S. could increase deforestation. Wow. An Earth Sight report raises alarms about new permits that allow more slaughterhouses in the Amazon to export beef to the United States. More slaughterhouses could lead to increased deforestation. Uh, imagine that. Uh, all 
Alright. Following coup in Myanmar, we're going to call that Burma. Following coup, Burma's indigenous vow to protect forests, quote, until the end of the world. Yes, I don't think they'll have to work for very long to do that. Uh, anyway, good, uh, good luck, uh, Burma's indigenous people. This is, we're going to go down to the Tana Terrell region in southern Burma. Contains an expanse of rainforest, ocean, and mangroves where a range of wildlife, from tigers and elephants to tapirs roam, and the indigenous Karen people consider themselves stewards of their richness. You know those Karens uh, getting in the face of those planet eaters. Uh, you know, it's just basically talking about, you know, since this military coup, uh, that the already joke uh, environmental regulations have completely gone out the window. Even uh, NPR, I heard, talking about this briefly this week, quote, attacks by the military on indigenous peoples and environmental defenders means that the forests are at risk. And for this reason, we want to say to the world, this coup doesn't just affect our country, but the future of the globe. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, we have black-footed ferrets getting corona panic vaccines. I'm uh, moving on. <clears throat> okay. After that story, uh, uh, okay, guys, I, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, I, I have no idea what Rhett Butler was smoking with this article. Rhett, if you're listening to this, what the hell are you thinking? Do you believe one word of this crap? This is beyond hopium. This is beyond apocaloptimism. I, this, this story here, guys, enters a realm that is too bizarre for my hopium roundup tomorrow. I, I, I am not making up this story in mangabay.com. Fortunately, not written by Rhett Butler. In Colombia, legal mining, yes, legal mining proves a win-win, a win-win for the environment and traditional communities. Yes, as a marker of its cultural importance and low environmental impact, Artisanal gold mining is permitted under Colombia's constitution inside indigenous territories. Uh, Swiss and U.S. international cooperation projects in Colombia have successfully shown how formalization of small scale miners can protect the environment and produce legal gold. Yes, improving the incomes of the miners, blah, blah, blah. From that one, uh, again, guys, I, I decided not to include uh, Manga Bay in my Hopium Roundup tomorrow, but if I did, you better believe, all right, we have Jeff Bezos and Michael Bloomberg, those two Save the Planet billionaires, among the donors committing $5 billion to protect biodiversity. Yes, nine philanthropic organizations, including the Bezos Earth Fund. Yes, kind of like the uh, Sancho Panza chipmunk protection fund 
Jeff Bezos is probably, Jeff Bezos, my guess, as much as any human being on the planet, is the single biggest threat to global biodiversity. Uh, well, maybe, maybe Jair Bozo Nero or that guy over there in China. Uh, but, but Jeff Bezos is certainly in the top five, you know, he's the richest person on the planet, uh, with Amazon. Uh, Jeff Bezos has, has done more that, well, certainly in the top five individuals responsible for the wholesale slaughter of global biodiversity. But uh, Jeff Bezos is saving the planet with the Bezos Earth Fund. All right, the fund is intended to reach the 30 by 30 initiative goal of protecting 30% of the planet's biodiversity by the year 2030. Anyway, uh, we don't need to rehash that in the uh, corporate greenwashing uh, hopium roundup. Rhett Butler, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, but after that story about mining, gold mining in Colombia being a win for the environment, you will not believe this. <clears throat> Never would have believed this if I hadn't read it here in Manga Bay. Six of the ten, six of the top ten palm oil conglomerates in Indonesia have coal mining businesses in addition to their palm oil businesses, and five of the top ten coal miners have oil palm businesses. Yes, a new report shows this substantial overlap between palm oil and coal mining means that consumer goods giants like Nestle and PepsiCo that buy palm oil from Indonesia are potentially exposed to mining risk too including deforestation and, and pollution. While most of the palm oil companies have zero deforestation policies and sustainability commitments, their affiliated mining companies are not scrutinized that closely and have often been associated with environmental degradation human rights abuses, and worsening climate change. Did you realize that World Gorilla Day was September 24th. World Gorilla Day went right underneath my radar. So what is the report of gorillas? How are gorillas doing on World Gorilla Day 2021? As conservationists across the globe observed World Gorilla Day, the September 24th, all species, that means every, every species and subspecies of gorilla remain either endangered or critically endangered. There you go. Yes. World Gorilla Day. Every gorilla on planet Earth is either endangered or critically endangered. All right. All right, we have a new comic book. There you go. A new comic book titled 10 Years to Save the World. Yep, yep, yep. Ah. Uh, I think that is the great idea for a comic book. Uh, oh Lord.
word as soon as we uh, get through with this crap over in, uh, in Glasgow, we can look forward to the upcoming UN Biodiversity Conference, I think, going on over there in China. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Biodiversity Conference uh, features proposals like the 30 by 30 Biodiversity Conservation Plan that we have all been hearing so much about lately. Yes, we have. Uh, all right, what is going on with those fires down in Brazil? Haven't heard much about the fires. Fires bear down on Brazilian Park that is home to jaguars and made wolves. Thousands of fires caused by humans. Hmm. Thousands of fires caused by humans in Brazil's Cerrado Savannah region continue to spread with several fires inside and around the Chapada dos Videros National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The park is home to dozens of rare and threatened species as well as the source of many important rivers and waterways. Experts warn the intensity of the fires could permanently damage the natural vegetation. The fires do not come as a surprise to many scientists who had predicted earlier this year that ongoing drought, rising rates of deforestation, and lack of enforcement would all build up to a severe fire season. Every single month this year has seen above, has seen above average levels of fire in the Cerrado with more than 36 percent of all fires in Brazil concentrated in this biome. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you will not uh, believe this. Remnant forests struggle to survive amid oil palm plantations. Ha! Huh. Who would have thought? Anyway, guys, one more. I realize I'm talking to myself. We're going to wind up. We're going to do one more here. How about we're going to go through the planetary boundary you have never heard of. That would be the novel chemical and novel chemical entities. Are we sleepwalking through a planetary boundary? The novel entity's planetary boundary encapsulates all toxic and long-lived substances that humans release into the environment, from heavy metals and radioactive waste to industrial chemicals and pesticides, which can threaten the stability of the Earth system. Humans, humans, have invented more than 140,000 synthetic chemicals and we now produce them in vast quantities. Around 2.3 billion tons of them annually. Yet, only a few thousand have been tested for their toxicity to humans or other organisms. That leaves humanity essentially flying blind to potential chemical interactions and impacts. There you go. Just looking at DDT, decades after DDT's impacts were reported, it is still regularly used in developing nations. Yep, yep, yep. Yes, NGOs call for an international tax on basic chemicals production. Good luck. Why don't we get rid of the chemicals? But of course, there's only 
one way to do that, and that's to get rid of the humans making the chemicals. But anyway, now that I am firmly talking to myself, and I have reached the bottom of my margarita, we need to go uh, find you some dinner, little dog. You say, Bop, I need my dinner. Uh, we will see you tomorrow for the uh, Hopium Corporate Greenwashing Roundup. That ought to be a fun one. Bye, guys.